Okay. Good morning, everybody. We're ready to go. Thank you for joining in our webinar. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Nikos Christakis from Multipoint. I'm based in Athens and responsible for Greece and Cyprus. We've arranged a very interesting webinar with our partner, Fireman, to discuss a current topic, securing your hybrid network and your security controls. With us is Lee Mapstead, EMEA Channel Manager, and Kostas Lotsi, Senior Sales Engineer from Fireman. Good morning, Lee. Kostas, great to have you with us. Good morning, everyone. Great to be here. Thank you, guys. Okay, so I'll start off with a few words about Multipoint, and then um, Lee and Kostas, you guys will take over. We should conclude about... 45 minutes or so. Meanwhile, please drop uh, any questions at any time. We'll try to answer them directly, live, or uh, through an email. Okay. So for the ones who may not know us, uh, Multipoint is a leading regional distributor, mainly of IT security solutions, with our headquarters in Israel. The company was founded in 2009 by Ricardo Resnick with a team of 19 people supporting our partners and customers in the Eastern Mediterranean, with presence in Greece, Romania, Dubai, Palestine, Cyprus, Moldova, and Malta. So what are we trying to do here? We enable our partners and customers to build a cyber strong IT by providing solutions for the poor basics of information security. Tools to discover what is in your network, assets, vulnerabilities, et cetera, the ability to manage your assets, your user identities, your network devices, and ability to control, control permissions, access rights, and finally protect your assets and critical information. In order to achieve this, we offer solutions which, which span a wide variety of categories, like data security and auditing, vulnerability management, patch management, endpoint management, network detection and response, PAM, privilege ID, access management and identity access management, network security policy, and this is of course where our Arkham Fireman comes into play, encryption, forensics, and of course code, malware, and other protection tools. Here's a short glimpse of the solutions we distribute in the region. In each sector, I'm pretty sure you'll recognize many vendors in this slide. And here's our frontline team. Starting off with our headquarters, we have the head, Ari Volman, leading the international sales team. Our enterprise sales in Israel are led by Marcelo. Our channel partners discussed with Eli. Lucian is here, running Romania. John Malta, Abdallah, running Palestine and Dubai sales. And me, Nikos, for Greece and Cyprus. But I think I've uh, spoken enough. It's time to move on to the actual webinar. I'll just grab my coffee here and uh, let uh, Lee and Kosas take over. Lee, are you ready, man? I am ready. Thank you very, very much, Nikos. Um, okay. I can't share my screen, so if you I'll... allow me to share my screen, please. Of course. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So, hopefully, Nikos, you can see my screen. Yeah? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Great stuff. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nikos. Um, really pleased to be speaking to everybody uh, today. This is a, a, an introduction into the Firemon uh, solution. Obviously, any questions, please feel free to um, raise a hand or chat and I'll do my absolute best to answer any questions um, you may have. So just a quick glimpse of Biomon. Um, we are an American organization headquartered out of uh, Kansas City and Dallas. Uh, the key thing for us right now is to know that we have a global presence, so obviously can uh, support you wherever you are. Uh, very interesting fact is the uh, is the fact that we are growing, averaging on 40% year on year. Uh, we have customers all, all over the world. And of course, uh, our renewal rates are, are really high at a renewal rate of around about 90%, 95% year on year. So good news for any resellers out there. Great news for uh, any, any possible end users because it just shows that our customers are very happy with what they have purchased. 
So customer challenges, what are, what are we looking at here? So whilst Fire One is, can be a very complicated solution, the challenges that it actually helps with are, are, are fairly easy to understand. And I'm sure you've all been in this situation before. So um, hybrid networks are getting more and more complicated. Uh, there's, more there's more data, uh, there's more equipment necessary, there's more staff. Uh, now with COVID, obviously uh, the workforce has changed, but most, most people are working from home. So there's new software involved. But just all in all, it, the, 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 the average, how average network has become a lot more complicated very recently. There's often the constant trade-off between what's good for business is not always good for security, and adding security is not always great for business. So we try and work with our customers to remove that kind of balancing act, to allow them to add security, but still focus on business continuity and making business easier. And this has been in the news recently. There's a global shortage of highly trained uh, technical staff. Um, and that's really around, around the technology kind of escalating in such a fast way that we really haven't had enough time to train up adequate people to manage and run our networks. But all of this really adds to a lack of visibility. And if you don't know what's going on in your network, that obviously adds to the unknown risk and gives attackers an ever-expanding attacking attack surface. A few numbers here, which I, I find really interesting. So. 70% of all unplanned network outages are caused by mistakes made during an approved change. And 83% of those are made on the firewall. But you've got to think about that. These are, these are people that understand the products that they've acquired. They've had training. Uh, they speak with the, with the various groups within the organization. And still, 83% of those changes made place, carefully made place, still cause mistakes and downtime on the networks. So why do customers even think about considering a product such as, as Firemon? So what we try and do is give business agility and the ability to see everything, integrate everywhere, adapt to change, protect everything, and scale and perform. So when we talk about seeing everything, we're talking about um, managing your attack surfaces, trying to eliminate leak paths, ensure compliance, because as I said a little earlier, what you, what you can't protect against what you can't see. And you're able to do this, all of this in real time. Um, integrating everywhere. So we really help with the sprawl of multiple security devices, especially in SOC scenarios. We give you, um, you often have the inability to share data. So the security devices that you're using were never designed to share data and information with other security devices. In fact, probably the exact opposite. Um, those security devices normally have very limited API interactions, so we can help with that with our own APIs. Um, we're talking about adapt to change, so two out of three businesses still rely on manual changes. Three out of four uh, need to talk to multiple departments to approve that change. So all that time and that effort and that delay often leads to missed SLAs, risk of misconfiguration, and obviously uh, compliance violations. Fireman can even help suggest rule changes to help you manage your network. So you can, you, can, you can say to it, if I make this change on this device, what will the implications be on my network without actually making that change? Um, we, uh, when we're talking about uh, protect everything, so um, you know, enterprises have more and more IP addresses and data than ever before, continuously adding complexity. 
In fact, Gartner said by the year 2023, 99% of firewall breaches will be, uh, will be due to misconfiguration alone. So we're kind of hurting ourselves in, 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 in the process just by accident, just because of the complexity of the, of the networks. We help you to manage your, um, your software-defined WANs and your, and your SASE software. Uh, we can simulate an attack and show you exactly what that what the effect of that attack will be on your network and also help you to discover vulnerabilities on your on your hybrid network as, as well. We also help you to scale and perform so uh, we can look at over 24 million IP addresses an hour. We can manage 15,000 devices, 25 million rules, and we can analyze all this data in real time. So obviously, this is particularly important if you're planning to migrate all of or even some of your, of your data in, into the cloud. Things just become a little bit more difficult to manage often when you're using an on-prem solution, when your network's on-prem, virtual, in the cloud. So who cares about this? Well, obviously, people who always care, so CISOs, heads of cybersecurity, network managers, security managers, and so on. But why? But it's actually really simple. We give them complete visibility, compliance, and automation. We help them to prevent firewall misconfiguration. We help them to remove risk from bad configuration and bad change. We can help with staff shortage because of the automation we can offer. You are able to do more with less. We enhance your, your existing solutions such as SOAR, SIM, ITSM, et cetera, et cetera, and we help you stop uh, compliancy violations. Uh, I'm sure some of you out there have either got these issues and talking about, about these, about, about these uh, subjects, or if you're a, if you're a reseller partner, uh, you've obviously got customers that will be talking about these sort of things on a day-to-day -day basis. So any large, complicated network we'd be often speaking about, PCI, audits of, 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 of some sort. They're constantly upgrading their, their hardware, their software, adding new solutions, removing old, old solutions. Digital transformation is being spoken about all the time. Just about everyone I speak to on a day-to-day -day -day basis is, doing, is, in the, is in the process of some form of digital transformation or at least you know, thinking about that, uh, something to do in, in the future. So all these sort of things are really important. And if you're having these conversations internally or with your, your customers, there's always a space for Fireman here to have, a, to have an educated, interesting um, conversation with, with, with these type of customers. But here's, our, here's our solution uh, in very basic terms. I, I'm just going to go over this very, very quickly. Uh, my colleague uh, Costas will go into it a little bit more depth when he kind of shows the, uh, the, 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 the GUI of the device. But security manager, nothing really works without security manager. It's what you have to buy. Uh, it gives you real-time visibility, gives you control, management, kind of gives you a single pane of glass, gives you compliance, change, clean up. Uh, then, of course, we have policy manager, policy, pol policy manager, uh, sorry, policy planner, um, optimizes performance and ensures um, it ensures a, a continuous compliancy um, for your network. Uh, policy optimizer uh, automates rule reviews, helps with risky or over convicted rules. We spoke about that a little earlier. Uh, Lumetta um, Lumetta is a, a product that we acquired a few years ago. Lumetta gives you um, visibility into unknown networks or even shadow networks in, in, in the cloud and gives you full visibility of everything that's going on within your network. Uh, Global Policy Controller uh, gives you continuous security and orchestration and also gives you a con consistent operating model to work with. And of course, last but not least, uh, Risk Analyzer, so real-time risk analysis and real-time threat modeling can even score your network as to how, how risky some of the policies are within your network. What makes us different? 
Well, I, I, I think what I've heard from customers is just the scalability of our solution, how much you, you can actually do with it. Also, the automization of what we're capable of. So we can take away the mundane tasks that you're, you're you know, highly skilled and obviously very expensive technical staff uh, have to do on a day-to-day basis. So they can get on with more important things and just relax that you know, we are taking charge and taking care of these mundane day-to-day changes that have to be made on every network every day. So we give you real-time visibility into hybrid cloud, cloud in, in environments as well. Um, and of course, our APIs just give you the flexibility to really integrate with most of the other solutions that you have on your network as well. What do our customers look like? Well, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to work out, uh, scientists to work out that you know, we really fit well into large, hybrid, complicated networks. That is a perfect fit for us. So, you know, ideally, they've got a mixture of technologies as well. We're talking about, you know, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Firemon, F5, and so on and so on. These devices are great products, but they were never designed to work together. So you just can't understand what they're saying. But we can take that data. We can, um, what we say, normalize it, which in another word is translate the language that they're speaking, so we can understand exactly what they're saying give you more information, so you can change policy, you can look at the risk, and you can have a total vision of what's going on within your network. Ideally, we have a mixture of uh, on-prem, private, public cloud uh, uh, cus- cus- uh, customers as well, <coughs> excuse me, and, and large, complex firewall policies as well. So industries that we are particularly strong in uh, at the moment, in EMEA, especially, we are very strong in the financial space. And I think that just underlines what I just said on the earlier slide. I mean, I can't think of many more verticals, any other verticals, that are as compliant, as risky, and sometimes as vulnerable as the financial uh, uh, verticals are. You know, if a, if a bank or a financial institute falls out of compliancy, the ramifications of that are so great, apart from the huge fines that they can get. You know, you've obviously got um, shareholder confidence loss. Uh, you've got customers that are the the the, the, the may may look about m- uh, moving from from your organisation to another organisation. That kind of just underlines what I've been been saying before: large, complicated compliance compliant necessary uh, networks. But saying that. You know, we can sell into any 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 network that uh, has these issues. Probably one of my favourite slides, to be honest. Um, so on the on the wagon wheel on the on the side, we kind of underline all the products that we work with um, straight out of the box. Uh, we met, we can work with just about any firewall vendor uh, that's out there. Obviously, we work with all the large networking vendors and so on, right through to SIM solutions, endpoint solutions, SOAR solutions. Um, so, and what's interesting about this as well is on the next slide, these are these are alliances that are important to us, but we're just as important to these vendors as well. So often on their website, with their sales team, they'll recommend Firemon because we work so elegantly with their solution. And we actually help them in some cases to sell more of their solution because their customers then have sort of visibility and control that I'm talking about. So who are our our competitors? Well, obviously we've got competitors, all vendors have competitors, but uh, I've been with Firemon a little while now and most of the end user meetings that I've been sitting in, Customers have said the same sort of thing. One of those things is they very quickly uh, agree to the fact that they wish they had heard about Firemon sooner because by installing our software, it takes away a lot of the pain that they've been feeling for some time. And some of them even say they wish they had heard about it years ago because they've been, they've been undertaking this, this pain for a long time. And they've been adding you know, extra professional services and consultants to help them manage their networks 
where now Fireman can take over a lot of those responsibilities because of the very nature of the product and because of the automation that we can offer. They've been using spreadsheet for years and the spreadsheets has got bigger and bigger and more complicated and therefore more, more errors. They've been employing extra staff to do what Firemon can do now and then giving their already busy, tired staff because of COVID more duties to do just because of the networks have changed. So these are our, these are our main competitors out there. So people who just don't realize or understand what we can offer and also uh, customers that are just used to using spreadsheets and using their staff to do, to do things, responsibilities that they just don't have to do. I'm kind of halfway through. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask my colleague, Costas, to uh, take over from here and just give you a brief demo of our, uh, of our user interface um, and just kind of underline in a more technical uh, level what we can actually do. Costas, over to you. Yes, thank you very much, Lee. Let me just start sharing my screen. Right, so a lot of colors and not a lot of nice information there, but in essence, what we are doing here with um, uh, the modules that we have within Firemon. So I'm just gonna go through the base module so we get a better understanding what exactly we are doing with um, uh, Firemon solution. Although I think uh, Lee has actually given a fantastic description of what we are about. But the main thing here is, I have been a security professional for quite a long time. What Firemon does is basically have, gives you at the glance is, am I doing the right thing? So basically, all the controls that I have put on my firewalls or my firewall administrators that they have actually put in the rules, removing rules, are they actually correct? Or they might have been correct, I don't know, five years ago, five months ago, but they might not be right now. So how can I monitor them? How I can, pick, I can be on top of that? And at the same time, am I going to do the right thing? So basically, do I have a kind of a baseline? Do I have also some new controls in place that they ensure that when I go through a change, I make the right thing. And let's consider that the perimi perimeter has now expanded. We have, in the past, we had the data center, we had, uh, the, uh, we had mainly firewalls, routers, and the infrastructure was on-prem. Now it's moving on to the cloud. So we, can, we are like, okay, we have to actually employ defense in depth. We have to have different layers. We have to have perimeters, but we have a whole different bunch of devices there, but we do have to maintain the same kind of security posture. And security posture, and, when we implement security, how do we implement it? How we don't always have to go over budget, we don't have to go below budget, but we have to implement what is enough to actually take us there. But it all starts about with um, uh, subscribing uh, to security principles. So basically, how do we actually secure? And one thing is about following our baselines, which can be a compliance assessment, it can be a regulatory compliance, and each one of those compliance is a control. That control can actually be, oh, I don't allow telnet, or uh, for example, zone-to-zone um, uh, -zone communication. All these controls are actually calculated and they provide a score, a mean score, if we actually see here in the devices revised for my estate. So I can have uh, parts of my estate or I can have my whole estate and what is going to give me? How many devices I got? How many changes were made on these devices? Who made the changes? And then, how secure am I? What's my compliance score? It's from zero to 10, simple CVSS scoring uh, metric there. But it actually gives us an idea that somebody might have made the change and don't trust. A lot of times we're gonna say long-term employees don't make mistakes. No, we all make mistakes, we're all humans. So somebody that might have gone, made a change, might, somebody might have gone and enabled the rule that it was disabled. At least we have visibility to know what somebody has done and we can go and rectify that. And that's real time. So we always get the information back from the firewalls uh, or routers or from um, uh, cloud platforms. So we, are, we stay on top of that. So we know that we have a certain security score, but then again, we can actually have the focus areas. So we can uh, see which of the firewalls are actually higher uh, from a risk perspective, and we can dive in and we can actually see, okay, why that specific firewall it's a bit higher in terms of scoring. It might be the case that it doesn't follow some, um, 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 it might be unused rules over a period of time, it might not have any justification for the changes. So from this perspective, we can actually see uh, 
which one is the most, let's say, riskiest assets for us, for us and go and uh, rectify that. And uh, a far more actually security manager with the help of the modules uh, of policy optimizer and policy planner helps to do that. But in the meantime, we, uh, we have to adhere to compliance. So we're always going to get a score about our, for our compliance assessments. So if we follow them or not. So if we see here, we can have different compliance assessment, whether this is standard for the financial industry, PCI DSS, or whether this is uh, something bespoke for our, for our environment, so a custom assessment, or a specific one for a, for a firewall uh, vendor, whether this is Palo Alto, Cisco, Checkpoint, or anything like that. And we continuously monitor and we can actually assess which ones are the high, let's say, risk, which ones are low. So from that point, we can dive in, we can check which um, controls are failing, and then from there, we can rectify them by adjusting the policy. And at the same time, everything that we have on the screen, we can generate as a report. We have about 25 to 30 reports out of the box, but you can also uh, put together um, individual reports by using uh, our um, filtering capability. So if we are looking onto the metrics that we have in terms of cleanup, because what we have to think about the firewall, firewalls are not static that much. They always change, always, we always have to revise them, we always have to see what was, uh, let's say, right yesterday, it doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, right today. So if we are going to do, the first point that we start with security manager is always the cleanup exercise. So with the cleanup exercise, right away, I collect the information uh, we collect information from the firewalls, and we can actually see, okay, how, well, how can I cha make these firewalls a little bit more healthy? How I, I can I make this firewall a little less risky? We cannot eliminate risk, but at least we can minimize it. And it's not firewall. It's basically, if you've been in security for all these years, you know that there is always something that audit might pick up, or if there's always something that uh, it's a new vulnerability, or it's something new on port XYZ that is open. So from there, we can actually see, have we implemented the rules correct? Do we need to get rid of any rules? Why we have unused rules? There's no point to have unused rules. It might be, I don't know, a branch or it might be a, a connection that is left there. It is unused, but who tells me that somebody can go and plug in a cable or you know, just penetrate the network and then get there and start using that rule and then we're like, okay, but that rule was unused for a long period of time. What has happened? So unused rules expose us. So basically what we are trying to do, not only uh, reduce, basically make uh, our um, uh, policy look a little bit more neat, but the main thing is tighten up the policy and make it sure that it's secure. And the same is also when we improve our policy, disable rules, why they are disabled, logging disabled, this can hide malicious activities. I, can, I have seen that in the past in my career. So it's always, always, you know, just be very diligent about how you make firewall changes. But at the same time, can you keep on top of that? Well, you can with Farmon. So rules without any comments. Somebody has put a comment, uh, somebody has made a change. We don't know about that change. So by combining that though with ticketing systems or by putting a comment within uh, Farmon's uh, own ticketing system, Policy Planner, that also does automation, we can actually prevent uh, such uh, instances that yeah, basically, you know, they hinder uh, visibility from, um, uh, from our firewalls. At the same time, uh, we can actually track any of the objects on the firewalls that they are unused, so uh, without putting any burden on the devices, because why do we create all these objects and we leave them there if they're unused? The less we have, the better off we are. So we just make sure that at the end of the day, it's not going to be the firewall administrator that maybe makes a mistake. He's not going to be liable. Maybe, you know, somebody, he's going to get reprimanded or anything like that. But at the end of the day, it's going to be management. So basically, have we done our due diligence? Have we actually uh, gone and have the metrics and have the, all the data uh, to basically justify uh, what we have uh, done uh, in our changes. Uh, so and that basically, at the end of the day, it gives you an insurance that you have done what you were supposed to do as a, as a security manager, as a CISO, as a, as a CEO at the end of the day. So if we're looking now onto individual devices, uh, of course, we uh, provide a plethora of information, so we can actually go and inspect, okay, I have this uh, little firewall. I'm not going to go into much detail, but basically, we have full visibility about what is happening on that firewall. And we have a unified interface, so at each and every point in time, you know, is that rule used? Is it risky? Can I get rid of it, um, basically, if it's not uh, used? 
And for each of these ones, we also have the documentation. So basically, if a change was made, uh, who has made the change over what period of time, and actually which changes were actually uh, made on a specific rule. So, and then we might decide, you know something, I don't want to actually have this rule anymore. It's unused, uh, it's risky, and um, uh, it has to go away. So even if we look here, for example, for a failed controls of that rule, we're gonna see this, this unused rules for over a period of time. So we're just like, okay, can we actually remove that rule? So we can say, yep, fine. We can actually remove that specific rule. So I can just go highlight that rule and I can actually send that to policy optimizer. This is a manual task, however, it can also be automated. So we have, on the back end, we have, depending on uh, if a rule is unused, we can actually uh, automate the whole procedure. And let's not forget about our open API that you can actually pretty much do every of the functions, in, if not more, uh, with, um, uh, um, uh, with, uh, than uh, with a GUI. So, and we can filter any kind of information. We have built-in filters, so if I just wanted to actually highlight a port 5064 if it's used here, and remember controls, we can actually create a control, we can put it in our custom assessment. So, it's the ease of use. As a Fargoal administrator, I don't want to spend my time maintaining a solution like Farmer. I want to just put my baseline there, let it monitor, and give me the data that I need. So we, although it's a kind of a, a solution that um, uh, looks after a complex, complicated environment, we don't try to make things complex in the solution itself. So when we send a let's say, uh, a rule to be um, removed or, as we call it, recertified, decertified. This is where we actually use the other modules, the policy optimizer. So on the policy optimizer, it actually follows the philosophy of um, a ticket. So we have a ticket because we have to follow audit. It doesn't mean I add, I remove a, a rule. You always have to follow audit. You always have to have justification about the changes. And this is where we actually um, put uh, our justification. So we can say, okay, I certify this rule, so I can say, okay, I keep it for a period of time. Or I can say, you know something, I don't want this rule anymore. I, it, this is uh, no longer needed. So we can say, okay, this rule is not needed. And once we actually do that, what we actually do, we do Fargo maintenance here. So basically, we are going to uh, start removing the rule by sending that to our ticketing system, to our, to our policy planner, our automated uh, policy system. And you can see here that we actually do also a risk assessment before the change. So if we violate any of our uh, controls. So, and we always do that. Whether we make a, a new um, change um, or we modify a rule, we always do this kind of uh, pre-assessment. Whether, um, oops, let me just reconnect here. So we always do this kind of uh, pre-assessment so to ensure that we follow the standards. It might be the case that somebody has asked us, okay, why don't you put Telnet there? And we're like, well, Telnet is not allowed within the business. So this is going to be automatically rejected. So no matter how hard they try, it's not going to be allowed. So what does this mean? So the Fargo team doesn't have to actually be on, uh, on the phone and say, well, uh, we are not allowed, but maybe I will allow you that time. Imagine you know, somebody new and they are just somebody the business is screaming their head off, for example, to actually go and make a change. As long as you follow policy, you don't expose yourself to this kind of risk. And with Policy Planner, we actually go through the steps. It's request a change, review the change, assess the change about any kind of security uh, risk, and then implement the change. So if we're looking here, for example, uh, on the design stage, we can actually put our details. This is going to be automatically fed to a new rule. And we can actually have multiple sources, destinations. We can uh, uh, inspect also zone-to-zone -zone configuration. We, can, we have other workflows, and you can modify the workflows. So we have an editor about that so that you can modify it and say, I want to have two technical approvals, or I have to have two-step review. It doesn't matter how many steps. But the main thing is that even uh, if uh, you wish to actually go ahead with a change, what we are going to do, we are going to recommend, oh, okay, yeah, I found a device that actually I can make the change, and this is Cisco Firewall. So do I need to make any change? Yeah, we recommend either you create or you modify a rule, and so we can say, okay, let's uh, create a new rule. And we are going to actually explain where this rule is going to be put, which, uh, uh, at which place in the policy. But the main thing here, to consider is we go through this process, but we always have in our mind 
are compliant. So, and all of this, it doesn't have to be manual. The, all of this can actually be completely automated as well. So you can go as fast. So we have what we call complete automation. So we auto design and we auto commit the change. So basically from the point, the moment I request a change to implementation in between, uh, the only maybe step that is going to be there is a security approval, but only for risky services. So you can dictate how much involvement humans are going to have into that. So this is my change now. So, and this is what uh, I'm going through. So if I just complete that, then it's going to go to the next step. So basically it's uh, the compliance step where it's going to ask us whether uh, this change can go ahead. If it's changed as usual, we can always have it as such that it can actually um, stop uh, it can actually not stop, but uh, it can be auto-approved. So if I approve that change now, you can see uh, I can assign that to me. Of course, I can automate completely all the steps. And now we just run that, and the changes are going to be staged and pushed onto the device. So it's as simple as that. We can have uh, integration with service now, so, and they talk back and forth. So all of these steps, they can completely automate it and completely transparent, or we can dictate where exactly we're going to put stops uh, within um, uh, the process. If we are looking now into um, generating reports, uh, let me just go back here. So we have this here. So we have a plethora of reports and why reports are necessary because you need to be aware of what's going on. So we have out of the box reports, which ones are most important? I would say it depends on the team. If I'm uh, a manager, I want to see that changes are happening. So we have the change report and who is making the changes. And if I'm uh, an administrator, I want to actually see are the rules in the correct order? Do I have unused rules? And what do I have to get rid of? And also, can I monitor an over-permissive rule uh, and basically tighten the policy? We can do that as well. We have the features that they actually deliver that. And of course, compliance. Compliance reports in terms of uh, whether this is um, uh, a compliance for um, a custom compliance or, or it's uh, something that uh, it's uh, regulatory. And all of these reports, they would just remain on the portal. So if we see here my reports, and we can have our bespoke ones, uh, we can uh, generate each uh, and every one of them. And it's going exactly to highlight whether we have passed or we have failed uh, that specific report or not. It can actually be specific for a device, it can be for a group of devices or a cluster. And um, from that point, I'm just going to make a quick stop uh, and I'm just checking the time. Please. Thank you very much, Costas. Let me share my screen again and we'll finish this off. Um, Costas, there's a couple of questions on the Q&A if you don't mind just answering them, if you don't, please. Sure, yeah. Thank you. So, um, any second now, this is going to change, I hope. Uh, we, I can see your screen now. Uh... Yeah, having trouble in changing the uh, moving it on. Uh, right. While you're doing that, I can actually we had uh, two sure. questions. If we, if we can install the solution on premise or in the private cloud, you can do either. Uh, you can actually install the solution. It's running on uh, uh, the it's uh, what we call an FMOS, which is Linux based uh, CentOS hardened system. So we follow all the uh, hardening principles and. Um, and it can be installed on premise on a VM or, 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 uh, or other platforms or even hardware. And also it can be installed on AWS or Azure. Uh, what are the requirements for implementation, hardware and software? We do have appliances and we can recommend also hardware that the solution can be deployed. And for um, uh, the software, the software comes together with uh, the operating system, the Linux CentOS, and also the software for the solution. Uh, in terms of requirements of uh, server specification, that depends uh, on, uh, on the size of the customer. So basically uh, how many devices we actually monitor. And uh, depending on this, we can actually recommend whether this is going to be a standalone contained system or it's going to be a distributed system plus any kind of requirements that have to do with um, uh, disaster recovery, high availability, 
have all options available. And this is uh, something that we actually discuss with our customers when we put together a design for them. Wonderful. Thank you, Costas. Well, hopefully you can see my screen again now, uh, Nikos. Yeah, yeah, all good. I can see so, it. So, uh, so these these are brand new from uh, Biomon. You'll, you'll, you can you can see these see the date below. Um, I think you may be the first people to see these. Uh, I don't know globally, but certainly um, in the EMEA re region. Um, and the purpose for these is just to be a really simple idea of, uh, of of what we do and how we do it in a very graphical manner. Um, so our, our, this first slide is all about what we can offer. So it's all around visibility, compliance, automation, and protecting our customers against uh, risk. So we've always done uh, the, the items at the bottom of the slide, so audit and compliance, threat, uh, threat surface reduction, firewall cleanup, firewall migration, and uh, SOAR and XDR integration. Uh, but the landscape is becoming more and more complicated every day. The traditional workload, so the products at the bottom, never seem to go away. But new um, complications seem to arrive almost uh, daily. So that's why we've added automation, cloud migration, zero trust networks, SD-WAN, and uh, SASE to our portfolio. It helps you uh, reduce your cost and uh, obviously saves you some time. When we look at uh, automation, let's say, well, why bother with automation? So it can, it can really help prevent or reduce uh, compliance violations, human error, and cost. Uh, you and your customers can have your own, you know, obviously have your own business processes already. You may even have uh, DevOps teams or threat hunting teams. Um, as you all know, input from your networks may come from many different sources, as you can see on the left-hand side of the, uh, of the slide. Uh, understanding a hybrid network can be extremely complicated. Uh, all changes can involve some form of risk or changes, uh, as Costa said, may not even be possible in, uh, in some cases. You need to understand what the implications are if you make that change. Uh, what, will, what rules will be broken? You know, will it affect your, your compliancy? And you can proactively check rules and changes to see what will happen if you make that uh, proposed change. When we, um, when we speak about SOAR and XDR, um, from here, Firemon adds awareness, of the policies and the, uh, the device path. It adds to threat monitoring, automated repairs and remediation. It can alert you if fireman considers a change could cause any downtime or a compliancy violation. Uh, fireman can also trigger a policy review, review if it feels it's necessary. And of course, so all this really reduces the time resolution of any issues. Uh, we have a very simple integration with security orchestration, automation and response engines. Also the same with extended uh, detection and, and, and response engines of so XDR. Uh, data from the, um, from the SD-WAN, load balancers, proxies, scanners, firewalls, SASE and a whole lot more is uh, is collected, translated, and analyzed all in real time. Um, cloud native, well, we allow you to see everything across your hybrid estate. We collect the data, we normalize it, that's our term for translating the language that the different security and network devices use. We can do that in real time um, your network ACLs, network security group, virtual private network, clouds, and more. We help you collect the data from all of those. We give you constant compliancy, uh, visibility of north-south traffic, and also east-west access. We help you to clean up unused firewall rules, as Costas has just uh, 
demonstrated. And we give you rule, misfiguration, and alerting as well. So this helps you to reduce the human error in your obviously very complicated environments. And all of this reduces cost, security, and operation time. Um, so when we talk about uh, secure access, service edge, and software-defined WANs, um, this is about bringing everything together to give you complete visibility across the hybrid estate. The policy consistency between everything across all environments, we collect and analyze data from firewalls, routers, uh, load balancers, proxies, VPN, SASE, SD-WAN. Um, we give you real-time compliancy, uh, so you're able to see how you are exposed, if you are exposed, we help you clean up the firewall proxy or automation, as well as rules misconfiguration alerts. So in a nutshell, we give you the ability to protect everything, see everything, integrate everywhere on your hybrid networks, adapt to change, really scale and perform. And that's me. I am I'm finished. So back to you, Nichols. I think you're on mute. Yeah, I'm on mute, man. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Lee and Costas. It was, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, so many issues that uh, not just cloud security controls that, uh, that Fireman solves. And I'd just like to close off by, uh, we had another question. Yes, of course, we can offer a POC. And here are the contacts of the colleagues again, if you want to uh, discuss further. Um, if there are any other questions, let me just check the box. Okay, I don't see anything there. I think we, we've answered them all. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for attending. And uh, have a great day. Thank you, everybody. And, and if anybody wants wants the slides that, I, that I've given, I'll be passing them over to uh, Nikos and the multi-point team, um, so please just uh, ask those guys and they can, they, they, they can send you the slides. Any more questions, then obviously please direct them at the multi-point team and uh, Costas and I will answer them as soon as we possibly can. Thank you, multi-point. It's Excellent. been a great event and, and I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you very much. Bye, guys.